Could Eve have conceived Cain from Satan, as the mysterious verse suggests? The story begins after Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden. Eve conceives and gives birth to Cain. But here's where it gets interesting, Eve calls Cain a man from the Lord. Why not just call him a son? Some suggest it could mean more than we think. Bible commentators propose that Cain and Abel had different fathers. Yes, you heard that right. They wonder if a divine being, like a Satan, could have been involved. This leads to questions about Cain's true origins. As the story unfolds, we see a family with secrets and mysteries. Who was really Cain's father? Did Satan play a part? As we all know, the Bible contains many contradictions and hidden elements. The following story is presented as a commentary. According to this commentary, Satan takes the form of a serpent, seduces Eve, and impregnates her with Cain's seed. This bad seed leads to the corruption of all Cain's descendants, ultimately bringing about their destruction in the floodwaters. After being expelled from Eden, Adam and Eve start their family. In Genesis 4 verse 1, it is said, Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. This raises some questions. Why does Eve refer to Cain as a man? Wouldn't it have been more natural to call him a son? Even more puzzling is her assertion that this man was, help of the Lord. Considering that Adam is described as the one who knew Eve his wife, the straightforward interpretation is that Eve expresses gratitude to God for enabling her to conceive. However, it's possible that Eve intended to convey that God was the father of her son, perhaps quite literally. Due to her innocence, Eve might not have comprehended the causal link between intercourse, conception, and birth. She could have attributed her firstborn's birth to God. Alternatively, her words could be seen as an indication of an actual, divine conception. But then, it's perplexing why it's mentioned that, Adam made love to his wife Eve. This raises the question, who is the real father? Adam or God. The description of Abel's birth is much simpler. Genesis 4 verse 2 states. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. To address what this verse might produce, some commentators propose that Cain and Abel were twins. Additionally, the verses don't disclose the reasoning behind the choice of the name Abel. Abel's name means, breath which could carry the connotation of being insubstantial or empty. This name could foreshadow his premature death at the hands of his envious brother Cain, leading to Cain's exile. The notable disparities in the accounts of Cain's and Abel's births have led to suggestions that the two sons might have had different fathers. Instead of viewing God as Cain's father, as implied by the verse, an alternate interpretation posits Cain as the offspring of a divine being, Satan, who tempted Eve. The view is based on Cain's peculiar characteristics, God's acceptance of Abel's offering, and Cain's tendency towards evil, culminating in fratricide. Some commentaries liken the tree in the Garden of Eden story to a man, Deuteronomy 20 verse 19, and the garden to a woman, Song of Songs 4 verse 12. This lends significance to the words. You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. Genesis 3 verse 3. The distinction between permitted and forbidden fruit pertains to the source of the seed, the offspring may be virtuous or malevolent based on their paternity. According to the text, Eve was impregnated first by Satan in the form of a serpent and later by Adam. Satan came to her and had relations with her, resulting in Cain's conception. Then, 
Adam came and Eve conceived Abel, as stated, and Adam knew Eve as his wife. While Satan isn't mentioned by name, commentators assume that Satan, referenced elsewhere, entered the serpent's body, tempted Eve, and thus led to born of Cain. However, this doesn't stop Adam from fathering a child with Eve. Eve is described as conceiving both Cain and Abel, twins in the same womb, from two different fathers. Upon Cain's birth, she recognizes his origin as not from ordinary beings, but from superior beings. This divine attribution leads her to name him Cain. When Abel dies without progeny, leaving only Cain, Satan's son. In Genesis 5 verse 3, it supports Cain's distinctiveness not from Adam. When Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he named him Seth. This further supports that Cain is neither the son of Adam nor his likeness. His actions did not match those of his brother Abel until Seth was born. Seth, who was of the seed and image of Adam, started to exhibit actions similar to those of his brother Abel. Adam was created in God's image, and this description includes Seth as well, as he was created in God's image. The verse emphasizes that Seth was born like Adam, in his image as his image, completely human, not as a result of an encounter with a divine being. The choice of the name, Seth, may have influenced the interpretation of the commentators, suggesting that Seth was meant to serve as a substitute for Abel. Genesis 4 verse 25 Adam made love to his wife again, and she gave birth to a son and named him Seth, saying, God has granted me another child in place of Abel, since Cain killed him. Here also, Eve attributes the conception to God. However, this time she uses the more general name of God. She describes it not as a partnership but as a gift from heaven. Furthermore, Seth is meant to replace the deceased Abel, and he will carry on the legacy of the lost seed of Abel. Seth becomes the ancestor of a lineage that, ten generations later, leads to Noah, the sole survivor of the flood and the progenitor of all humans. The name of Seth's first son, Enosh, precisely means, person. Genesis 4 verse 26 Seth also had a son, and he named him Enosh. At that time people began to call on the name of the Lord. Cain's dynasty continues for seven generations but is completely wiped out in the flood. In fact, the last thing we hear about a descendant of Cain is Lamech's poem. In this poem, Lamech boasts about the killings he has done and compares himself to Cain. According to the commentators, the distinction between Cain's seed and Seth's seed is not accidental. It reflects the contrasting origins of Cain, with a demonic nature, and Seth's descendants, who possess a human nature. All the descendants of Cain, who deny their dependence on God, are the ones who inhabited the earth before the flood. The premise suggests that moral character is defined by genetics rather than the environment. The generations born from the bad seed may follow corrupt and demonic ways, influenced by their father, Satan. However, Seth, from whom Noah was born, came from a good seed in the image and likeness of Adam, and by implication, in the image and likeness of God. There is another intriguing story surrounding the murder of Cain and Abel. It revolves around a verse that was mysteriously cut off without any explanation. What actually happened in the moments leading up to the murder? What was the argument about at that crucial moment? Although the writers of the Bible may have left some mysterious verses, their interpretations still exist. Feel free to explore them with us on our channel or by clicking on the link above. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, 
Give this video a like and share it with your friends. You can share with us what you know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time.